What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Strictly Diecast episode. We're coming to you live midweek. Um, I know I don't really usually put out the midweek videos too much anymore, but um, in this instance, I kind of have to because I got some stuff I got to show off and another custom that I want to show you guys because I have a ton more customs coming up that I'm going to show you this weekend. Uh, I got my three um, customs coming up that are going to be for sale. Um, and then I got one other custom finished up for my best friend. Um, and then I got two, well, one more custom uh, for our buddy King Nissan that I'm going to be wrapping up as well. So I've been cranking out the customs guys. And uh, yeah, I cannot wait to show you. They all came out really, really awesome. But um, anyways, in today's quick little video, yes, it is going to be quick, I promise, hopefully sub 20 minutes. Um, I'm just going to go over a few re recent um, purchases and whatnot uh, real quick that I have gotten in the mail in the past couple of days. And then we will move on to the custom at the end of this video. And uh, I totally forgot to show this shirt whenever I first got it, but um, today when I'm filming this, I know you guys are seeing this on Wednesday, but yesterday was uh, the, I believe that, yeah, the 20th anniversary of the Killdozer. If you guys are not familiar with that, I highly, highly recommend going and reading about it. Um, it's just, it's, it's a really, really great story about a man and just getting screwed over by um, the town and, uh, one of the famous quotes is sometimes a reasonable man has to do unreasonable things. And that's exactly, uh, exactly what he did. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but if you know, you know, um, I got this shirt off of a, uh, a TikTok shop like months ago, but it says he uh, demolition incorporated established 2004, which is when this happened was June 4th, 2004 in Granby, Colorado, Marvin he Um, <laughs> so yeah, like I said, if you know, you know, but if you don't, I highly recommend reading up about it. Um, there's also like a kind of like a little documentary. Um, it was on Netflix. I don't know if it's still on there, but uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, let's show off what I got here. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I got two things from Diecast 164. Um, I believe, yeah, I bought these on Memorial Day because uh, he was having a Memorial Day sale. So I went ahead and picked up two more uh, Tarmac Works. And the first one here, uh, I was super, super excited about because it is only going to expand my Tarmac RWB collection, which like I've stated, um, I really wanna try to collect as many RWB Porsches that I can from Tarmac. So this one is the RWB 964. This is the Idlers um, edition, which is, I'm kind of naming it like the, uh, the Ronald McDonald car, as you guys can see there in the red and yellow, definitely screams McDonald's, <laughs> but, uh, super, super nice. Nonetheless, these are both still going to be in package. So we will eventually unbox them and take a look at them. But, uh, yeah, that one's just really, really awesome. It's got RWB down there in the base, got idlers and 17 on the back there. Nice yellow wheels super super nice so i was definitely excited to add that one to the collection and then this next one is definitely kind of on the um, opposite end of the spectrum but it is uh the ferrari 458 italia gt3 this is the blanc blanc pain endurance series 2012 monza and the reason why i pulled the trigger on this one is because i saw derek over at honest diecast open one of these up and I just fell in love with it. I was already eyeing it up, but that definitely sealed the deal with me. So check that bad boy out. This thing is super, super sick looking. Love like the monster energy and like, just like that crazy deco going all the way around it. But yeah, that thing is insanely nice. So another Ferrari for the collection. I definitely like my Ferrari race cars. That is for sure. I know Derek is definitely like a, a Porsche race car guy, but I would say I'm probably tied between like Lamborghini and Ferrari without a doubt. So yeah, super simple, but the car is definitely very, very nice. So shout out to Diecast164. If you guys do not know about that site, um, super awesome site, it has everything from Tarmac to Eno to Kaido, Hot Wheels, Matchbox, 
uh, everything in between, and he offers free shipping. There is no minimum purchase, so definitely go check him out. Um, but yeah, so moving on, I also got some stuff in from JCar. Uh, I got two little goodies here. I hurried up and jumped on this, especially because I was trying to find one of these at the diecast show, but um, it was already too late and everybody either scooped them up or they were packed up already. But I finally got my hands on the Gran Turismo 7 Nissan Skyline GTR R34. This thing is fantastic looking. I absolutely love Gran Turismo. I absolutely love Skylines, especially the R34. So this was a must have. And uh, yeah, now I think I have like three out of five from this pop culture because I have the GT3 Skyline, I got the MTV, and then I don't have the Beavis the Butthead or the Dumb and Dumber one. Dumber the Care Bottom, so. But yeah, very, very excited to add that to the collection. So that would definitely be freed up here very shortly, I'm sure. And then I also went ahead and pulled a trigger on this new two pack because we are still stuck on the older two pack releases. I do not know when we will see these, if we will see these. So this is the Subaru Rally kind of, I guess, two pack, which is got the Subaru Impreza WRX and then the 16 Subaru WRX STI. And the reason I really wanted this set is because for one, I do not have one of those premium bug eye wrx is yet in my collection so i really wanted that one and then i also never got the boulevard version of this so i went ahead and just picked up both of them because it's a good way to add two cars for the price of i guess one or whatever um to my collection so i went ahead and picked up one of these so i'm very very excited to crack this open and add these to the collection and then i also really wanted that super street set they were sold out whenever I went ahead and uh, was buying these two things, but I think they might be in stock again, so I might go ahead and pick one up. But yeah, and plus J card, um, I think in like the damaged, which I don't know if this was part of like the scratch and dent or whatever, it might've been just because of like a little bent corner or something like that. Um, they're usually around retail price. And then all I have to do is pay shipping, so that's not too bad. So I got those as well and then the last thing here um i got a <laughs> kind of like a funny blonde moment if you will um i actually ordered a set of 25 um i went ahead and got diamond protectors um i've heard really really good things about these i know derek talks them up a lot uh, my man anthony recently bought a bunch of these and was saying really good things about how clear they are and how sturdy they are and i will say these things i mean you can look at that super super crystal clear <laughs> but uh yeah and just they're very very nice i mean they got a good very good seal to them it's got the embossed diamond protector logo in the back so i went ahead and picked up 25 um i only got a couple left here because i went ahead and swapped out every single super treasure hunt um and then i threw my audi super all in diamond protectors along with the Japan Historics one set. So everything is in diamond protectors now. So now I got a bunch of miscellaneous protectors to um, use for stuff. But um, yeah, I'm very, very happy with my purchase. And these actually came from Diecast of Hickory, which if you guys watch Derek's latest video, he went ahead and stopped there whenever he was in North Carolina for work. And it looked like an awesome, awesome time, awesome shop. They had both diecast and real cars on display. Um, but whenever I ordered um, the Diamond Protector, I'm pretty sure I got them off of the Diamond Protector website. I did not realize that they were coming from Diecast of Hickory. So I actually thought, um, I was looking on my credit card statement, um, and I saw a purchase for like X amount of money and it was at Diecast of Hickory. And I'm like, wait a second, I have never been there. I have, I've only seen, like I've only just heard of it because of Derek's video. Um, I'd never even went on the website, anything like that. So I'm like, huh, I'm like, well, I guess my credit card got hacked. So I was just thinking, I'm like, how, like it, it was made on like 12 a.m. on, um, on Memorial Day or something like that. And I'm like, well, I was definitely sleeping. Um, long story short, guys, I filed a fraudulent activity on my credit card. My credit card got locked. And then I went ahead and called Diecast of Hickory to explain to him what was going on and everything like that. And the guy's like, oh yeah, like, let me hop on the computer and see what I can do for you. 
And then he asked me, he's like, so is the charge either from diecast of hickory or diamond protectors? And as soon as he said diamond protectors, I just started busting out laughing. I'm like, man, I'm a freaking idiot. Um, I did not realize, I was like, I did just order 25 protectors. And I was like, I did not realize that they come from you guys. And he goes, yep, there's your, that's, that's your sign, that's your problem. So uh, yeah, needless to say, it was just my own dumb fault. And I <laughs> accidentally, I guess, locked my credit card for no reason. And now they're sending me a brand new one, which kind of sucks, but whatever, didn't really need a new one. So, oh well, like I said, it was my own dumb fault. So uh, yeah, maybe just next time, always do some research because uh, there's all their information on the back. So definitely go hit them up if you're looking for some protectors or just some really nice die cast. Um, but yeah, so you live and you learn. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, anyways, that will wrap it up for things on this side of the camera. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet at least because, um, like I said, I got a sh lot to show you guys. Um, coming up here probably will be Saturday, Sunday, something like that. I'm not really too sure yet. I'm actually going to a Pirates game, a baseball game Saturday. So I got that to look forward to. But uh, yeah, I definitely cannot wait to show you guys all these customs I got coming up. But speaking of which, um, we are going to now take a look at the custom that I made for my buddy Chris, AKA Furiously Collecting. Um, and guys, this one has quite the little um, story behind it because it was not an easy custom to do. I ran into quite a bit of headache with this thing. But you guys will hear all about that whenever I go over in the custom video. But the end result turned out super, super sick. He was really stoked about it, and that's all that matters. So, yeah. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. And we will go ahead and take a look at that custom. Alrighty, guys. So, got another custom finished up here. Um, this is a... Freebie custom, like I previously mentioned. Um, this is definitely going to a very good friend of mine, somebody I have thoroughly enjoyed um, meeting and talking to in this community. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably or should probably know who he is. Um, he has gained quite a following on YouTube. I think he's at over like 6,000 subscribers, which is nuts because I still remember when I subbed to him when he was, I believe, still under a thousand, which is crazy. But um, yeah, uh, that being said, uh, this custom is for my man, Furiously Collecting. Um, like I said, I'm sure a lot of you guys know who he is or should know who he is. Super cool, laid back dude. Um, he's got one heck of a Fast and the Furious collection. Um, definitely way more cars than I have. And um, yeah, just an overall awesome dude uh, in the community. Uh, has really nice content. He just finished up his whole die cast um, room and like hangout area, which looks really nice. He's got like a nice LED sign and everything like that. And um, yeah, so without any uh, further ado, I will present to you the car that I made for him here. Um, it definitely, this one has quite a little bit of a story behind it, but we will let it go around on the turntable here. So I decided to make him a BMW E30 M3, as you can see here. Um, and I will say right off the bat, guys, uh, this thing was a chore. Um, <laughs> Not so much that it was really difficult to do, but um, it just, this thing gave me a lot of grief. Um, I will throw up some pictures for you guys um, to show what I am talking about, but essentially everything was going good the first time around. And yes, this is the second attempt at this, believe it or not. So uh, yes, everything was going good. Uh, it was painted, it had the decals on it. I did get the decals from HHW Customs, which I know I'm pretty sure he did previously mention to me before I even got these that, um, cause I had some experiences with his decals before um, splitting, like they were very fragile, um, even before clear coat. 
So I guess I just kind of took my chances and um, used them anyways. And I had them laid down and I thought I had them all pushed on pretty good and they were nice and dry. I went to spray the clear coat on them and then disaster struck and some of the decals started splitting. I'll throw up the pictures for you guys so you can see. Um, definitely very like upsetting and frustrating because the clear is the final step um, in the process. And whenever that happens, uh, it's essentially no bueno, um, at least to me. I just, I do not like putting out stuff like that. Um, you guys know me, I do try my hardest to get things as perfect as possible. And uh, of course, you know, people and, and maybe even him, um, you know, he may not have cared, but to me personally, even though it was a freebie custom, I'm like, I just, I can't. So went back to the drawing board, stripped it and, um, yeah, repainted it again. And the first time around, I did not do the middle bumper, uh, the middle part of the bumper trim, as you guys see here, that is all done in black. Um, so I painted it again and then I decided to do the bumper trim and uh, I my hand got away from me and I slipped and um, it, it marked up like the back of the bumper and then I tried to use some, um, some thinner to try and wipe it off and it just smeared it and made it completely purple looking. So again, I had to restrip it. Um, I did not have decals or anything else on there so luckily that was not a big deal. Um, so I restripped it for the second time, got it repainted again, and then I hit up this guy on Instagram called Netso Customs. Um, I know a lot of people um, are familiar with him on Instagram. He does really, really nice decals. And um, he was already, I already hit him up. Um, well, actually, no, these are the first set of decals I hit him up about, and then I actually got a bunch more off of them. Actually, those decals for that 84 Corvette, um, that little Swift logo thing, he actually did those as well. But I explained to him what was going on and everything like that, and uh, he basically recreated the decal set for me, but he did add in the headlights and taillights and everything like that. So, um, yeah, I did explain to HHW Customs what happened, and he basically said um, that I like you should, and I, I know he has it on his site, um, but it does say now clear the decals before applying them, which I'm not a huge fan of. I don't really think anybody is, but so yeah, it just sucks, but it is what it is. Lesson learned there. So Netso Customs actually recreated that decal set for me. So these aren't his actual decals. These are actually HHW decals, but I just had him make them for me. Um, just because his decals are very, very good quality. They are reverse print, but they are insanely good quality as you can see. So yeah um anyways let's move on here so i got the decals put on and as you can see it turned out much much better i will say that this is still not perfect but it definitely came out much better than the first go around and i actually did the decals a little bit differently as well um so yes this is painted a wicked white um it does have the liqui liqui i think is how you say it or liqua liqua molly um race kind of livery on it as well just a very generic livery but um obviously liquid molly is very big into the euro scene for like volkswagen bmw audi stuff like that it's a very common uh oil to run in these so that is why i chose this uh particular livery on it um it does have some other decals on there there's sparko on the rear bumper there it says michelin sparko um I think that's Tyne um, suspension. And then I needed a decal to f decal to fit up um, the front part of the um, side skirt there. So I, j I just put Monster Energy. Um, they were really the only decals that I had that would kind of work right there. So that is actually not part of the race livery, but I just needed something to fill up the spot there. So that is why those are there. It does say Sparkle on the front plate um number 96 on there as well and then i did put hhw customs license plate on the rear because like i said this actually was his decal set so i had to give him credit as well so yeah um we'll take a look at the top here real quick 
that is the hood there, same thing. Just got the graphics going. And obviously I chose like the red and the blue um, because that is part of BMW's colors there. And then it does say Liquid Molly on the um, rear spoiler there. So yeah, um, the headlights and taillights were originally hand painted. And the first time I did them, I they came out really, really good. And then the second go around, they weren't as good, but they were still pretty good. But like I said, he did print out um, headlights and taillight decals. So I was like, you know what? I have them, so I'm just going to slap them on. So those are all um decals as well and i also added the bmw badge in the back and up front on the hood which is a really nice touch as well um the parts that are hand painted on here are the mirrors are hand painted the door handles the door locks and then the rear bumper trim as you can see there is all done as well as the front bumper um the turn signals down there are hand painted and then all those um grill inserts and stuff those are all hand painted as well so definitely has a little bit of everything going on here um as far as just water slides and hand painted decals um but i will say two of the small issues that did arise after i clear coated this thing again is um one i don't know if you guys have noticed but I did use a Sharpie pen for this because obviously it was small enough to get in there. There is an indentation for it. And I know Hewitt has talked about this as well, but um, I mean, guys, I did that probably a month or so ago and I just clear coated that thing and um, I still had major bleeding going on from the pen. So needless to say, I would not be using a Sharpie pen anymore. I don't know what causes it to run or bleed like it does, but it definitely sucks. So I did touch it up as best as I could. It's not perfect by any means, but it is good as I could possibly get it. So it is what it is. And then also, um, I don't think I had some of the decal edges pushed down just enough. So luckily the clear didn't totally ruin them or destroy them. But I will say if you do not put, push your decals down guys as good as you can, that clear gets under there and it will literally start disintegrating your decals. Um, so as you can see up around the edges of the fender there, um, it started doing it same on the other side as well as right down here on the um, on the door I know guys, it's very very minimal, but it just bugs me So I just wanted to point them out and then um, up top here I did eat a little bit on the top of the liquid Molly um, logo not terrible and then I think it did it a little bit on the spoiler in the back too, but Regardless, I don't like to frown upon it. It is what it is. It still turned out like 99% like perfect. So just what I had envisioned. So I'm still very happy with it. Um, it is sitting on these 15 spoke chrome um, wheels because I definitely wanted like a BBS style wheel on it. So those are the wheels that I chose. Um, on the rear, we do, or rear, on the bottom, we do have full detailing going on there. The exhaust, the drivetrain, the transmission, the rear diff. Um, I did put a custom uh, 3D printed exhaust on there. This does, is, uh, this is the turn style, or turn down style exhaust on it, which I thought looked pretty cool. Something different than just a, reg a regular muffler. So that is why I chose that. And then the interior, um, I do have a full custom uh, roll cap, well, basically like a half cage in there that I handmade. Um, it is done in chrome. The interior got painted black. And then I two-toned them with the white in the middle of the seats there. It does have a 3D printed steering wheel. I've got the gauges all done up, the shifter, um, all of that jazz. So this thing is ready for the track or just a nice car show. It is a roller, as you can see as well. <laughs> Um, it does sit pretty low, but it does roll. So yeah, um, sorry, that was a little bit of a story, but this thing, um, my man, Bobby Mills can attest because I was blowing him up left and right because I showed him a picture of it and stuff like that. And we were just talking about it. So yeah, he knows, um, the hardships that I faced to get this thing to where it was. And again, it is not a hundred percent perfect, but, um, I did try my absolute best on it. So hopefully man um you enjoy it but as you guys know these always come out after the fact so if you want to go see his reaction on it then please go and watch the video on it and um yeah please go just check out his channel um in general because like i said he's a super super cool dude so definitely go hit him up but yeah that is the custom bmw e30 i got done for him 
it definitely came out pretty good all in all and i'm just happy it's finally out of my hair so <laughs> yeah all righty guys that will wrap it up for this so let me know what you think please hit that thumbs up button drop me a comment let me know how i did and please hit that thumbs up button or uh subscribe button excuse me if you haven't already and we will see you in the next episode peace